Yes. Well, comparison is is a major ego device for maintaining separation, and it's like the separation is just a belief, but it's it's hidden under a projected hierarchy of illusions, which is what preferences are, which is what favoring some over others, or being more drawn to some and less drawn to others, and so on and so forth. That's all part of a giant smokescreen that kind of is like a giant cobweb that kind of keep the spider hidden, like a massive cobweb, so that it's so distractive and becomes so addictive and becomes so accepted and so natural that it's not questioned. In fact, that's the whole point of the world, is to become so familiarized and so accepted that it's never questioned. Um, some of you saw the Matrix movie and and uh, Agent Smith, who was kind of a was kind of a, an agent, an ego character, but he he was saying that people accept the world with which they're presented, kind of talking about the human condition, like they're all suckers for whatever seems to be presented, whatever they perceive is what they believe, and that's true. Actually, that was a one of the, the truisms that Agent Smith sm spoke, you know, that, that you, pr you accept the world with which you're presented, when really what we're being taught now is we have to question everything about not only the world we're, with which we're presented, but also the, the belief system underneath that world that made the world. Because that belief system and the world are the same. They're the same cobweb. And the ego belief is like hiding underneath it. So it's quite an intricate cobweb, and it's a cobweb of, of comparisons. So, first question is kind of like, what do we do about these comparisons? Well, it's an addictive form of believing and thinking, so addictive that all education in this world is based on comparison. All education. It doesn't matter which discipline you go into. It's all based on comparison. You might say that maybe quantum physics, you know, once it starts to get down b the lower and lower beneath the molecular level, beneath the atomic level, and then underneath we'll say the subatomic level, there's this hint that everything is perfectly connected, everything is energy, everything is joined. And in that, that that's kind of like uh, theorized about, uh, the quantum physicists will theorize, but that, that connectedness has no comparison because it's, it's completely uh, unified. It's unified awareness. It's, it's pure energy. But everything else that we would say is studied in this world, all the disciplines, when you go to school or preschool, junior school, high school, college, graduate school, all of the disciplines, we could say the one thing that they have in common is they all are based on a curriculum of comparison. It's impossible to think of any of these disciplines without comparison. It's just, it's the bedrock. And so once you go deep enough and you start to realize, wow, comparison is just the part of the status quo, that's just a given, that's just accepted. You know, it's, you know, hear people say, do we, are we really capable of comparing? You'll never hear that on a, on a commentary show, on a game show, on whatever, because it's already the game show, the news broadcast, the scientific discovery show, the whatever is being presented is already based on comparisons. And so, in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, comparison must be an ego device, for love makes none. That's the, you know, why can't I feel the love? Why can't I feel the love and the connectedness, the connectivity, is because comparison is a, is a defense mechanism that was made that love would never be experienced. It's, it was made as such a deeply complex system, such an all-pervasive system, in fact, in the Matrix, you know, Morpheus says, the Matrix is all around you. Everything that you perceive, he's basically saying to Neo, is the Matrix. And you could say the same about 
the world of comparisons, everything that's part of perception is there and held in place, almost like the glue that holds the cobweb in place is the comparison. So you, you have to have an experience or even just a glimpse of an experience that, that transcends comparison. And most of the times when people talk about a, a very profound spiritual experience or a mystical experience, they'll call it, it's a state of no judgment pure, total acceptance. Um, there's just no, no duality to it. There's, there's a, that's why there's no comparison, because there's really nothing to compare. All-knowingness, or, you know, it's called, described in many ways. Um, it's like, there's, there are, are symbols for it. I mean, on the way here, uh, Francis and I took off, and we started off in Camas, and we came down, they had blizzards going on, and up 12, 18 inches of snow just north of Salt Lake City and so on and so forth. And so when we came here today, we actually came through some passageways where it just got more white and more white and more white to the point that you couldn't tell the difference between the horizon and the mountains or the fields or the highway or anything. It just, like you called it Antarctica. Are we in Antarctica? <laughs> it literally felt like we just drove right into the middle of Antarctica. Because it just got whiter and whiter and whiter and whiter, and all distinctions faded in that whiteness. There was some slight gradations, some little slight, slight, like light grays and bright whites, and then all of a sudden it just got white, white, thick white, like everything was, well, the air was white. And it was just kind of interesting driving. It was like it was like moving into abstraction because there was there were no familiar lines anywhere. And having had some revelatory experiences, that's that's similar to the experience I had where the, the three dimensionality of the world collapsed, then this light started streaming through, then the world just disappeared and there wasn't any vestige of a world left. There was no gradations. It was just all pure light. Just everything was light. There was no subject and object in it. It was just pure white light, everything. And that we could equate with love. That's what the love is. And so in A Course in Miracles, again, Jesus says, if you attain the faintest glimmering of what love means today, you have advanced in distance without measure and in time beyond the count of years. You might say every moment every, of every day in your life is all an openness and a readiness and a willingness to have the faintest glimmering of what love means today. You know, it's like that's your prayer in your heart. You know, instead of like the old uh, movie, the famous uh, saying, show me the money, it's like, show me the love is really a call, a prayer in your heart to have the faintest glimmering of what that really means. Because love, even in this world, the word love is used in many different contexts. And it, everything from romantic love to, you know, bumper stickers, I love my, I love my Volvo, I love my I love the New York Yankees. I love, you know, it, the bumper stickers just put the I heart and, you know, you can throw whatever you want at the end of it, but that's all just attachment. There aren't any Yankees in heaven. There aren't any Volvos in heaven. It's just I heart, you know, even that merges together. You can stick with either one. The I is the all pervasive I am or the heart is, is the heart of it all. And so, you know, that's really what we're going for. And, and initially, when you start to even open up to that idea of opening to that love, it, at first you can feel all the ego objections in your own mind, or maybe even if you would even speak such, a, such an idea to friends, family, relatives, colleagues, or whatever, I say, oh, right, like, you're going to discover what love is? What, what are we talking about? Like, unconditional love? Uh, Agape love, you know, this and this. You and how many others have, have attempted to even find that. But, but actually there has to be a point where you 
sincerely in your heart say, yes, that, that is the meaning of my life. While I believe I have a life that's apart from it all, the purpose of that life has to be the remembrance of that love that I am. You know, that's, that is the meaning of life. Uh, you know, even though we know there's Monty Python and all the hilarious attempts at looking at the craziness of searching for the meaning of life, and in, in the end we, we do have to end the search. You know, it's not, we can't forever be seekers. Uh, we have to be a finder at some point. You know, it, the search must end in, a, in an actual experience. And so that's what you could say you can consciously devote yourself over to. And then as we start to look at that, and you read things like, this course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is far beyond what can be taught. It does aim at removing the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence. Then you start to see that that it's not like you can just affirm your way into heaven. Um, it's not so easy as just like with Popeye, I am that I am and that's all that I am. It's not just so easy as to say the words. There actually has to be a, a transformation that occurs, a complete transformation from what I believed, seemingly formerly believed, to an experience that transcends all belief. And that's what you give your heart over to. That's what we're here for. When I talked initially about the little snubs, you know, as you do attempt to sink into meditation, as you give yourself this quiet time out here, there's not necessarily a lot of distractions out here in form. This isn't like an amusement park or, or whatever. It's, it's a snowy, cold canyon. And yet, you do get to watch your mind, you know, what it's trying to generate, what, it's, what gyrations it goes through. You, you do get a better awareness of what's actually going on in consciousness. And then you do have a better awareness of what you're going to really deal with and face. Uh, you ha and with a trust that you, are, you have the strength within you, you have the presence and the guidance and the love within you that will carry you into that experience. So that's really what it's about. That's what we call forgiveness, is, is letting everything up. And it's, it's pretty much a, uh, you could say it's a, it's a daily practice, it's a moment-by-moment -moment practice. So you, you desire that experience of, of love, and, and we might say just by desiring that, by desiring that, you're calling that forth, you're calling that into awareness, and anything that's unlike that experience of love will come up into awareness for forgiveness. So that's how it works. <laughs>